Secret Empire issue number nine. One more before the finale. I give Marvel credit. Hey, at least this series has been on time, right? Stay tuned for the review, everyone. Hey Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and fans, I am Mike Spider Slayer getting ready to bring you that all important comic book review so you the fans can make a decision on what comic books to buy and yes guys, we are talking about Secret Empire issue number 9, one more before the finale. Um, this series has been real up and down for me and a lot of it has to do with the artwork. Sometimes when I read a story like this in so much depth, uh, the artwork is very important to get all the details when you have this amount of characters in it. And with Sorrentino's artwork, he's kind of drawn me away from the story a little bit. But this last issue, issue number eight, and this issue here has drawn me back into the story a little bit more. Now, the writer of this book is Nick Spencer. The pencils in this is done by a couple different artists, Linnell Francis Yu with Joe Bennett. The artwork is much improved in my opinion. You actually get to make out who the characters are and just the structures and the vehicles and everything else are much more detailed. So you can just make out the action of what's happening in the series. So let's continue the story. Let's talk about it and I'll give you my final thoughts on this particular issue. So we're in Washington, D.C., and Hail, uh, Hail Hydra is still has the upper hand, even though in the last issue, Earth's Mightiest Heroes uh, wind up seeing like, okay, they're coming together, they're going to get the upper hand, there's hope, they're going to defeat Hydra. And so in this issue, it kind of continues that, um, where you see the heroes gain momentum. However, Steve Rogers still thinks he has the upper hand. He has Wakanda. Uh, he has, I'm sorry, Black Panther, obviously, King of Wakanda, uh, at his hand. He has pretty much all the shards in his possession at this time as well, except maybe one of them. And uh, he forces Emma Frost to surrender as well. And you get to see throughout this issue just one big fight Again, with Earth's Mightiest, you get to see some of the other heroes come in board because they're all getting the message from uh, Captain America, Sam Wilson. And so you, you just wind up seeing things looking good for our heroes at this point. Thor Odison makes his appearance in here as well to help try to turn the tide. Magneto is, you know, putting in his, you know, two cents in the whole thing as well. And uh, we even see Jane Foster... Uh, make her way back out of the other dimension or realm or planet that she was in. If you've read that tie-in, that was pretty good as well. Uh, to get more heroes involved, which is the champions, probably my favorite moment in this particular book uh, this time around was actually when you get to see Taskmaster and Black Ant um, kind of flip sides here. Like, hmm. You know, I've been in the mercenary business a long time, Taskmaster says, and he's like, you know, the best thing to do is to change sides. And just the the humor between Black Ant and Taskmaster were great. And in order to release the champions, uh, they had some a few demands, which I thought it was hysterical. And one, it was just like, please don't hit us when we drop the field. And, you know, he's like, second, he's like, make sure the Avengers know we let you watch TV in here. And then the third one was, and about that time we brought you Shake Shack, which I thought it was hilarious. And so in a very dark and very gritty and very warlike book, we have finally got some really good humor in this issue. And that's what I could really appreciate here. So once they're let out, <laughs> they find they web Black Ant and Taskmaster anyway. And they're just like, wow, I hate kids. We wind up seeing the kids kind of reunite with their parents and whatnot. And uh, we just see different things going on in this issue. Um, the next thing we wind up finding out is that Captain America winds up getting all these shards together and this the, in the almost the complete cosmic cube and he winds up making this huge like suit or whatever it is i guess to give him this ultimate power to defeat 
uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which I thought was was pretty cool. Sharon Carter has a cool moment in here as well. Uh, and then also we wind up finding out finally what this other world is um, uh, that this Captain America has been in. Has it been in a different dimension? Uh, you know, is it just a different type of Captain America? And finally we get that revealed to us that we find out that he is in actually Kobik's Kob mind. It's in, He's an actual memory to Kobik, so, and she's scared to actually bring him back, and pretty much that's the, really the entire issue in the nutshell, and like I said, just like when you thought that the heroes were getting that upper hand, our heroes have to fight the man himself, it's like the final boss battle, and that's Captain America with the possession of really pretty much the Cosmic Cube in this crazy suit that he wears, so, what did I think about this? Uh, particular issue. I thought it was cool. I I don't think there was much that progressed any more of the story than it did in the last issue. So I don't know why they really had to extend it to a 10th issue because really what you got to see was this battle. And maybe the point of it was to see how the tides turn and maybe that's what Nick Spencer wanted to share with his readers. Um, before we get to that final boss battle on who wins and who loses the war. Um, but overall, I thought it was a great issue. It had some great comedic uh, things in there with Taskmaster and Black Ant. And uh, it was just a pretty issue to look at, I thought. Um, this was probably one of my favorite issues with the artwork where you could see all the heroes in here working together to try to defeat Hydra to see to show you how strong they've actually been, how strong their forces are. So I thought that was a, it was a good issue. Um, again, do I think this is the best Marvel event that Marvel has ever put out? No. Is it a little bit drawn out? Probably. Um, but, however, I enjoyed this particular issue. So I'm going to give this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I liked it. I didn't love it, but it was very entertaining. So, guys, now it's your turn in the comments below to tell me what you thought of Secret Empire issue number 9. Are you happy this series is coming to a close? Has this been drawn out for you? Are you looking to forward to Marvel Legacy? Because that's obviously the next event, which even though Marvel says it's not really an event, it's just like a relaunch or whatever it is. So, guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Frontline. Don't forget to check out our website, ComicFrontline.com. Also, don't forget to check out our live show each and every Tuesday night. Uh, it starts at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about our comics top five, the comic news, and a whole bunch more. So until then, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, and thanks for watching. See you soon, guys. Bye.